Hey everybody, Doward here. I am going to be doing some benchmarking today. I have, if you've missed it, I just did a video where I disassembled my Buffalo Mini Station Thunderbolt enclosure right here. And I took the drive from that, which was a 500 gig, 5400 RPM drive, and I installed it in this, which is just a Vantec Nexstar USB 2.0 enclosure. I took the drive that originally came in this, which was a 750 gig, 7200 RPM drive. It is now installed into the Buffalo Mini Station Thunderbolt enclosure here. It is hooked up via Thunderbolt as my late 2011 MacBook Pro does not come with USB 3.0 leaving Thunderbolt as the only option I have for high speed I.O. The MacBook Pro is now has the primary Mac OS X installed on a 250 gig Samsung 840 series um, SSD which I've already done benchmarking on pretty much everything, so this should be the last bit of benchmarking I do for a little while on this unless I get my hands on a FireWire drive just as a comparo point. The next thing I'm going to do is just go ahead and run this benchmark. All right, so our first benchmark is going to be the that Buffalo 5400 RPM drive, which it's called HDPATU3. It was just what it was called, you know, right from the factory. I didn't bother to change it. This is now installed in a USB 2.0 enclosure, um, just a, that regular Vantech Nexstar. So remember that drive did top out before at 104 megs write, 104 megs read. And as you can see, USB 2.0 is just a ridiculous bottleneck. It's fine for peripheral, but not for external storage. So it looks like we've got about 26 and a half meg write, about 34 and a half meg read. Now let's change that over to the 7200 RPM drive currently in the Thunderbolt enclosure. Now remember the 5400 RPM 500 gig drive did about 104 meg read, 104 meg write. So I'm curious to see, you know, if all this was worth it. Yeah, so it looks like we're doing I'm just gonna go ahead and call it 118 meg on both. So we gain 15 megs a second, about 10% faster than the 5400 RPM drive. Granted it is a 750 gig versus a 500 gig, you know, so I do have the extra 50% you know, more space. Just as a Comparo though, let me go ahead and select the SSD. Yeah, 250 meg, right? 490 meg read. <laughs> Once the prices of SSDs come down eventually, I'd like to see myself get a one terabyte SSD drive and put it inside that enclosure. I, I think that would really give me the best of both worlds. Thunderbolt has a much higher um, throughput than USB 3 does, uh, so I fully intend to utilize that Thunderbolt technology on this MacBook Pro, um, especially for doing any kind, of, you know, any kind of large video edits or anything like that, you know, such as the one I'll be doing with this. So there you go. Overall, yeah, you get about 10% faster with 7200 versus 5400 RPM. Um, I'm kind of surprised by that, I'll be honest. It's been a while, like I said, since I've done any kind of benchmark stuff on hard drives. Um, it used to be that you had a much, much greater disparity between a 5400 and a 7200 RPM drive. I gotta be honest, if you're comfortable with the space that the 500 gig gives you, I'm not sure it's really gonna be worth it. Um, I wanted to get in there and take a look at what made it tick anyway, so I'm, I'm all right with doing that. But uh, overall, I probably could have just left the 500 gig in there. 
but I got a little bit faster faster speed so I guess I'm not going to complain. Really the space will be useful. Um, I already partitioned that drive out. I've got 600 gigs available now. For I've got I went from 400 gigs of space to use with a 100 gig time drive a time machine to a 150 gig time machine with 600 gigs of space to use. So I guess it wasn't really not worth it. Just not as not as big of a jump as I'd hoped. I really I don't know what I was expecting out of that. I don't know maybe 130 megs, 140. That would be nice. Well, there you go. Thanks for watching.